Oh, now it gets disturbing. Now it gets disturbing, of course. The other two were weird, okay? The other two were weird, but this one is fucking disturbing. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another video. Today, we are checking out SCP-1472 Multiverse Strip Club. Now, I just put this in a poll, and you guys voted for this one. Not really, a, not really a surprise there. At least I know now what my subscribers like on this channel, you know what I mean? But anyway, yeah, today we're taking a strip to the Multiverse Strip Club. I've actually never been to a strip club in real life, so, you know, this would be a first for me. Although it's not a real strip club, it's a... But, you know what, never mind. Anyway, man, this video is from The Volgon, so be sure to subscribe to The Volgon if you have not already. Makes great SCP content. Um, definitely a very intriguing SCP. I mean, Multiverse Strip Club, I mean... It reminds me of something out of Warhammer, you know, that, you know what I mean? Like, something that the Slanesh followers would uh, be, be at, you know what I mean? And uh, the Emperor in the TTS series did make some jokes about a multiverse strip club, so yeah, it's a sticky one there. I'm not too sure what this is going to be, I'm assuming because there is a theme of multiple universes in the SCP Foundation, maybe there is just one strip club for, that everyone goes to, you know what I mean? You'd obviously have to be some kind of reality bender probably to get in. Or maybe there is just a uh, a door you could walk through. But I guess the Volgon will explain to us what that is in this video, man. We're going to get into this video, man. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I upload every single day. So, yeah, if you never want to miss a video, make sure you hit those notifications. Like I said, every single day. I also stream on Twitch, so be sure to go follow me over there. And for all the updates on the channel and all sorts of other good stuff, join our Discord. And yeah, if you would go to the Multiverse Strip Club, be sure to leave a like on the video. And if you don't leave a like, that means you're not going, you know what I mean? <laughs> anyway, we're gonna get into this video, man. Yeah, let's go. Such a weird one. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Miller, and the SCP we're going to be looking at today is SCP-1472. Object class, safe of course it's safe special containment procedures a three meter tall chain link privacy fence is to be constructed around the property boundary of scp 1472 construction signage is to be placed on all sides of the perimeter fence as to deter public suspicion mobile task force iota 6 also known as hard knocks are tasked with protecting the site from trespassers mm. and are to be stationed within a four block quadrant around scp-1472 at all times dressed in so it is contained it is contained so they have a fence around it and they have a mtf force des designated to protecting it it's must be one hell of a strip club boys so i'm gonna say an applicable urban attire any civilians that breach the fence are to be apprehended and be administered Class A amnestics before being released. If. Any testing involving D-Class resources must have Level 3 approval. All D-Class personnel involved with testing are to be interrogated via polygraph afterwards. Why? Description. SCP-1472 is a brightly painted single-story brick building located in East St. Louis, Illinois, USA, on the corner of Street and Avenue. The exterior condition of the building is poor, but remains stable. City records indicate that the building was erected in 1978 by the now defunct corporation. Wow. SCP-1472 has been condemned since 2001, when SCP-1472's anomalous activity began. SCP-1472 has only one accessible entrance on the west side of the building. When entered during its inactive state, SCP-1472 appears completely empty. Okay, so it's just an empty building and a condemned building, which means it's closed off. So it just looks like a rundown piece of shit building that, you know, no one think twice about during the day. But when, obviously, you can go into it, it's like a po probably a portal, right? SCP-1472 only becomes active every Saturday at 2 a.m. Oh. During this active state, an overweight human male SCP-1472-1 will exit from SCP-1472 and display signage out in front of the entrance. <laughs> Why is he overweight? The display is set directly on the asphalt in front of the entrance, which lists a schedule of events. Mm. The other larger display is placed directly on the side of the building and lit with decorative neon lighting. Notes. SCP-1472 signage text on the 1st of December 2013. Exotic girls. Exotic or girls or equivalent. Right, so if you're 
you got some sort of other species, you know what I mean? Maybe that's what you go to the strip club for, I guess. I mean, it can't be open that long. And you'd have to be waiting outside at 2 a.m. Yeah, this is a sticky one, isn't it? During the active period, SCP-1472-1 will insist that all persons seeking admittance pay a cover charge of dollars. Wow, don't even get to know. in photography or video recording once inside. Oof. Shows will differ nightly. However, the performances always range from 2 a.m. to 3.30 a.m. So it's only open hour During and a half. During the duration of the performances, the entrance or exit will remain locked until the last show ends. I don't like that. Injuries and fatalities have occurred depending on the content of the show. Participants have been observed to sustain psychological no. trauma. No, 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 no. Now it does sound like a Slaneshi slip strip club. Psychological trauma. Death. At a strip club? I thought the worst that could happen is an STD, honestly. But, uh, yeah. Test log 1472011213. Although a strip club is not a fucking brothel, you know what I mean? Although I did hear a story of a guy who got gonorrhea in his eye after going to a strip club, so take that what you will, you know? 3 4. Preamble. Three D-class subjects were approved for testing on the 1st of December 2013. Lucky guys. D-class so test lucky. subjects were transported to the site and told to wait in front of the entrance of SCP-1472. Surely if you're a D-class and you get assigned this, you wouldn't be too disappointed. You know what I mean? It could be a lot worse. D-class test subjects were told that they must take notes and report everything that they see inside. Mm. Below was a schedule of events as posted outside of SCP-1472 before testing. Schedule of shows. 2 to 2.10, admittance. 2.10 to 2.15, the Kunbish sisters. That does not sound fun. 2.15 to 2.20, Helen Keller. Eh? 2.20 to 2.30, the Fantastic Zippy and Trainer. 2.30 to 235 teeth and claw marks no 235 to 240 intermission intermission 240 to 241 erotic performance.exe so like a computer thing it's got, it's got to be like a computer strip club equivalent 241 to 245 the council of libidinous elders oh no 245 no, no, no. to 320 Serial number 223244-09-P. No thanks. 320-330, to indecipherable cuneiform script. So you have to sit through all of these random multiverse strip club equivalent. That, that does not sound fun to me. D-class ID. D-3432, D-6744, and D-9908. 150 AM. D-class test subjects were dropped off by transport and were told to approach SCP-1472's entrance. Each were given $100 in $5 bills. I swear you meant to take $1, $1 bills. Alright, I only get $100. Wow. D-class test subjects are also encouraged to spend their money once inside. Nice. 1.55 AM. SCP-1472-1 emerged from the entrance with signage. SCP-1472-1 began to set up around the entrance. D-class test subjects and SCP-1472-1 did not interact with each other. 2 a.m. SCP-1472-1 allowed admittance into SCP-1472. SCP-1472-1 asked from each D-class test subject dollars as a cover charge. D-class test subjects obliged and paid said cover charge in exchange for admission into SCP-1472. 2.03 AM All D-class subjects were now inside SCP-1472. D-class test subjects reported that the interior conditions were excellent. Mm. The interior was outfitted with shag carpeting, mirrored walls, and a single disco ball which hung from the ceiling. That's a, bit a thick fabric curtain that <laughs> covered most of the stage and a single brass pole which extended from the ceiling down into the middle of the room. I thought a disco ball was like a uh, something they showed in TV shows, you know what I mean? Like, for some reason in, in TV shows, there's always a disco, bo disco ball at a prom or even at parties, at clubs. 
I mean, I don't really go to clubs, so I wouldn't know, but it's a bit weird. Comfortable seating arrangements were made available for a maximum occupancy of 30. Only 30? To 10 a.m. to 2.15 a.m. The Kunbish sisters. The curtain opened to reveal two naked women sitting on a wooden log. The women appeared to be twins of Asian descent. Both hey. women then performed traditional Tuvan throat singing <laughs> while massaging each other for the duration of the show. Oh. D3432 and D9908 deposited $10 on stage, which prompted the women to pause and begin a faster song. The curtain then closed. I don't, I, I don't know what he means by massaging. I don't know if it has to be PG or not. You know what I mean? But uh, maybe it's just regular massaging. I don't know. The end of the show. 2.15 a.m. to 2.20 a.m. Helen Keller. The curtain opened to reveal a woman with the same physical appearance as Helen Keller Who is in her Helen Keller? 20s. The woman was dressed in typical Las Vegas showgirl attire and began to perform a dance routine on stage while undressing at the same time. D3432, D6744, and D9908 each deposited $10 on stage. This prompted the woman to immediately interrupt her routine and recite poetry for a few seconds. D6744 <laughs> deposited another $5 on stage with the same results. The curtain then closed at the end of the show. Okay, so the first one, the Coonbish sisters or whatever they were called, they just start singing faster the more money you throw on. So yeah, that could be quite hilarious. The, se the second one, Helen Keller, just recites poetry in the middle of the show for a few seconds when you give her money. That's kind of odd. 2.20 a.m. to 2.30 a.m. The Fantastic Zippy and Trainer. The curtain opened to reveal an orangutan sitting on a metal stool next to a headless woman with advanced necrotizing fasciitis. A? Despite being headless, the woman was able to function normally. The oh, now it gets disturbing. Now it gets disturbing, of course. The other two were weird, okay? The other two were weird, but this one is fucking disturbing. My god, orangutan. I mean, orangutans are creepy, okay? You know what I mean? If you watch Jungle Book, especially the real life version, King Louie in the Jungle Book's kind of scary, but <laughs> that's that's neither here or there. Um, why? What? What is? What is that? What did he say? Necrotizing fasciitis. What is that? I mean, necro necrotizing is like rotting, right? Necro usually is associated with dead, right? So I'm assuming that is something is rotting, and she has no head. Her head's cut off. Oh, disturbing. Stop. Tang then began to give vocal commands directed at the woman, to which she responded by performing a pole dancing oh. routine. Oh, D3432 no. deposited Please, no. $5 on the floor next to the woman. The woman responded by pushing the $5 bill directly into her exposed oh. trachea. That the is orangutan not... then ordered the woman back to the stage. My trachea does not like the sound of that. My god. Oh no. The curtain then closed Disturbed. at the end of the show. I'm disturbed. 2.30 a.m. to 2.35 a.m. Teeth and claw marks. The curtain opened to reveal four predatory bipedal reptiles. Oh, no, 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 Based skip. on the D-class test subject's descriptions, the reptiles may have belonged to the genus Velociraptor. Each were dressed in a Japanese-made cosplay costume tailored to fit them. What? The reptiles began to approach D-1908 offstage in an extremely aggressive manner. Oh. D-1908 relinquished all of his money which seemed to appease the reptiles as they collected the money and shifted attention towards D-3432. I, I would give them all my money too. If you have four Velociraptor-esque creatures in costume coming for you, I'd do it too. D-3432 also relinquished all of his money. And the last one got eaten, results. didn't they? Afterwards, all four reptiles were ordered back on stage by SCP-1472-1, and the curtain then closed. D-6744 divided the remainder of his money with the other D-class test subjects. I wonder if there was anyone else there. Or just the D-class. 5 a.m. to 2.40 no events were a.m. Oh, it's intermission. intermission. No events were reported during this time. 2.40 a.m. to 2.41 a.m. Erotic Performance.exe. Mm. The curtain opened to reveal a Gateway 2000 computer and a monitor running a Finestra 98 operating system. The display booted up and opened a program on its desktop. 
The computer then began to rapidly recite a multitude of differential equations as well as their respective 3D graphical My representations God. for 20 seconds. At the end of the program, the monitor displayed the word insert in the form of a screensaver. D6744 and D3432 both inserted $5 into its floppy drive. The curtain then closed. Okay, so somebody gets really, really turned on by, um, by computers solving differential equations. That's a weird verse. Multiverse, At the end of the show. Universe. That's what I'm looking 241 for. 2.41 a.m. to 2.45 This one seems very... The Council of Libidinous Elders. Libidinous. The curtain opened to reveal 16 entities levitating above the stage. I'm already scared. Each entity appeared as a translucent gelatinous mass filled with membranous tissues. The entities then began to project transmissions via telepathy oh into my. the minds of the D-Class test subjects. D-Class test subjects reported migraines, no. acute tinnitus, no. and projected thoughts of intense physical sensation. No money was deposited on the stage. The curtain then closed at the end of the show. That would definitely be the worst. I mean, the Velociraptors. And the woman would actually, the woman with no head is very disturbing. That one, though, like, that reminds me of that Rick and Morty episode, Spoilers Ahead, where they have, like, that weird, is it floating brain that is telepathic, and then Morty ends up killing it after trying to save it. 2.45 a.m. to 3.20 a.m. Serial number... 22324409P The curtain opened to reveal a pair of mechanical humanoid legs running in place. The apparatus was being powered by an internal combustion generator situated on the left side of the stage. This one SCP-1472-1 was seen pouring a substance into the generator by funnel. Based on the D-Class test subject's descriptions of appearance and odor, this substance is believed to possibly be raw ambergris. What is that? After 15 minutes, D-9908 deposited $5 on stage. The apparatus then began to perform a traditional Irish step dancing routine. SCP-1472-1 then brought out a plastic tray filled with an unknown species of beetle and placed the apparatus atop them. The apparatus continued to dance for the duration of the show while SCP-1472-1 periodically replaced the trays with refilled ones. The aroma produced by the performance was reported to be overly pungent to the point of nausea. Well, somebody gets off to the, to the smell of crushed beetle-like creatures. That is disgusting. The curtain then closed at the end of the show. 3.20 a.m. to 3.30 a.m. Indecipherable cuneiform script. The curtain opened to reveal SCP-1093 wearing a small mawashi and holding an ornate stone blade. Mm -hmm. After a minute, SCP-1093 lunged at D-3432. Oh, no. After a brief altercation, SCP-1093 was able to render D-3432 unconscious and move his body towards the stage. Based on reports by the D-Class test subjects, SCP-1093 then began to perform a ritual human sacrifice. D-6744 attempted to rescue D-3432, but was halted by SCP-1472-1 and was warned that he was not allowed to touch the dancers. S My man got sacrificed. Who the hell is getting excited to sacrificial D-class members by other SCPs? Oh... Oh no, I mean, there's definitely some twisted people that would definitely... CP-1093 then proceeded to remove all major organs from D-3432 oh. in order of size before kicking them off stage. Oh, This oh, lasted for God. the remainder of the show. Fuck no, can I go home now? Note. Foundation records confirm that SCP-1093 was secured in its containment unit during this time period which suggests that this was a physically identical yet extremely violent instance of SCP-1093. I don't even know what 1093 is. It is also is. believed that during their performance, SCP-1093 was only producing roughly 4% of its normal radioactive emissions since D-6744 and D-9908 survived with moderate radiation poisoning wow. after the show ended. 3.32 AM. SCP-1472-1 was observed standing outside smoking a large cigar as the surviving D-Class subjects staggered out of SCP-1472. D-6744 and D-1908 were apprehended and taken to the infirmary. 
SCP-1472-1 was then observed removing the signs and retreating back to SCP-1472. The 3432's remains were never recovered. Poor fella. Poor fella. Well, I can safely say that I am never going to this strip club. Never. Never, never, never. I mean, it, it, was, it was weird. It was a bit odd at, at the start, you know? With the girls that were just sitting on a log and massaging each other where the fuck that was. And then, you know, it got disturbing real quick with the woman with no head. Yep. That that was... Well, that, I mean, the Helen Keller one was second, which it, it was a bit disturbing. Not really. It was just weird. Then the disturbing ones came, slowly but surely. You had a, one of a computer with a floppy disk. Yeah, this... Yes, I'm a bit I'm a bit shocked to be fair. I don't know if all the people that voted for this SCP knew what it was and wanted to scar me, or were just intrigued by multiverse strip club like I was. But um yeah man. Not too much more to say. I'm gonna go and uh probably cry after hearing one of those. Um that was very disturbing. I'm I'm kinda rattled. Probably just gonna never enter a strip club out of fear now. Of being locked in and having to watch all of that. At least, I uh, hopefully, I wouldn't have been the D-Class that got sacrificed. But uh, I also would have got radiation poisoning. Yeah, nah, definitely not going. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed this reaction, man, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. I'll see you all next time.